in Death and the Compass, in Artifices, part two of Fixiones, Master Detective Eric Lonroot foresees, but does not prevent, the last in a staggered series of bloody acts. And although he fails to guess the identity of the killer, he interprets the secret form of the crime and the participation of Red Sherlock, whose alias is Sherlock the Dandy. Jumping back, the narrator explains that the first crime happens at the Hotel du Nord in an unnamed city. Dr. Marcel Yarmolinsky is in town for the third Talmudic Congress on December 3rd. He has a room near the Tetrarch of Galilee. A Tetrarch is a local ruler. On December 4th, Yarmolinsky does not answer a phone call from a Yiddish newspaper and is found dead in his room, a stab wound in his chest. Lanrut and Commissioner Trevoranus enter the room to investigate. Trevoranus thinks a thief is trying to steal some sapphires from the Tetrarch and entered Yarmolinsky's room by mistake. Yarmolinsky surprised him, and the thief killed him. Lanrut admits the motive is possible, but rejects it as not interesting. Even if reality is not interesting, hypotheses have to be. Lanrut takes Yarmolinsky's books on Judaism, mysticism, and the history of the Hasidic sect of Judaism to study them. A police agent in the room finds a piece of paper on which is written, the first letter of the name has been spoken. On January 3rd, a second similar crime occurs. A dead man is found on a deserted street. Naked except for a large cape, Daniel Simon Azevedo, a former political operative turned thief, has been stabbed in the chest. Nearby, written in chalk, are the words, the second letter of the name has been spoken. On February 3rd, the third crime occurs. Someone calls Commissioner Trevoranus, saying he can explain the murders of Yarmolinsky and Azevedo in return for money. But the connection goes dead. The call is traced to a pub called Liverpool House, whose owner, Black Finnegan, says the call was made by a lodger named Griffius, who was last seen leaving the pub with two people dressed as Harlequin clowns and speaking Yiddish. As they got into a cab, one Harlequin scrawled on the wall of a shed, the last of the letters of the name has been spoken. Trevoranus examines Griffius' room, noting a Latin book about Hebrew philology, and summons Lanrut to the scene. Lanrut reads a passage underlined in the Latin book, translating it as, the Hebrew day begins at sundown and lasts until the following sundown. The illustrious gunman, Red Sherlock, says such crimes never happen in his district, the South. On March 1st, Trevoranus receives a letter saying there will not be a fourth crime on March 4th, and the three previous crime scenes form an equilateral triangle. This letter includes a map illustrating the triangle. Trevoranus sends the letter and the map to Lanrut, who studies them and announces he has solved the crime. The next night, the criminals will be in jail and adds they are indeed planning a fourth crime. Lanrut enters the estate of Trist Leroy, a symmetrical building. He explores antechambers and galleries, the duplicate patios. He is infinitely reflected in opposing mirrors, thinking the size of the house is an illusion enlarged by shadows, by the symmetry, the mirror, the years, my ignorance, the solitude. He enters an observatory and confronts Red Sherlock, who reveals that three years ago, Lanrut arrested Sherlock's brother. In the tumult, Red was shot and spent nine days near death, racked with fever. An Irishman tried to convert him to Christianity. He grew to hate his body and its symmetries. Now he sees the world as a labyrinth, and he has created a labyrinth to ensnare Lanrut. On Sherlock's orders, Azevedo tried to rob the Tetrarch, but Azevedo blundered into Yarmolinsky's room and killed him to silence him. At the time of the killing, Yarmolinsky himself had just written, the first letter of the name has been spoken. Ten days later, Sherlock read that Lanrut was studying Yarmolinsky's Hebraic library for clues. So Sherlock studied similar books, then killed Azevedo and scattered mystical Jewish clues all around. He knew Lanrut would know there had to be four crimes because tetragrammaton means the four letters of the name of God, the only four that can be written. Sherlock planned everything to lure Lanrut to the solitude of Tris Leroy. Lanrut, looking at the rhomboid shapes in the windows, tells Sherlock they might be destined to meet again. 
Next time, Sharluk should set up a labyrinth made of a straight line, not a square or rhomboid. Sharluk agrees to do so the next time I kill you. He adds the straight line is an invisible and everlasting labyrinth. He then shoots and kills Lanrut. Death and the Compass draws on the tradition of classic detective fiction while also mocking the infallible detective. In an instance of situational irony, Trevorana solves the case almost immediately. Lanrut and Sharluk are also doubles, in a way. Lanrut seizes on the books in Yarmolensky's room, thinking the solution must be in there because the solution must be interesting. Sharluk reads similar books in an imitation of Lanrut. As in the other stories in Fixiones, the double overtakes the original, and Sharluk outwits Lanrut.